Abacus Multiplication Introduction Greetings. In this class, we will be learning multiplication on the abacus. To participate in the class, the important thing you will need is a Cranmer abacus. Since this is an online course, you will need a computer or other device to access the classwork. And it would be helpful to complete each lesson alongside your teacher of students with visual impairments or a family member who can help. There are several prerequisites to learning multiplication. Students should have an understanding of Abacus basic concepts. If you want a refresher, refer to Deborah Sewell's Abacus Introduction, Parts of the Abacus, and Abacus Introduction Vocabulary Terms. Students should be fluent in addition on the abacus. Subtraction is great also, but you will be performing addition when multiplying, so it is very important. If you need to practice addition, I would recommend taking the Short-Term Programs course, Abacus Part 2, Addition and Subtraction. For teachers and families, Deborah Sewell's Abacus Getting Started with the Counting Method is an excellent video resource. Students should either be studying or have studied multiplication in a mathematics class or understand the concept of multiplication and the vocabulary that is used. It helps to know that a multiplicand is the number being multiplied and the multiplier is the number doing the multiplying. The product, then, is the result of a multiplication problem. You should know that multiplication is simply repeated addition. For example, 4 times 3 equals 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 12. In this problem, 4 is the multiplicand. 3 is the multiplier and 12 is the product. If we have four threes or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, that also equals 12 or 3 times 4. In this problem, 3 is the multiplicand 4 is the multiplier, and 12 is still the product. Your peers see this in print as either three groups of 4, or as four groups of 3. Your teacher can recreate these groups using manipulatives. So on an APH work play tray, you can set three groups of four, or you can set four groups of three. Your teacher can also recreate these groups on the abacus. If we ignore place value and set a four in the ones column, a four in the tens column, and a four in the hundreds column, there are three groups of four. We can count these away from the counting bar one bead at a time to get to 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's do the same thing with four groups of three. I'm going to ignore place value and set a 3 in the 1s, 10s, 100s, and 1000s columns. Then I will add them up as I count away from the separation bar, one bead at a time, to get 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This works as a good strategy for teaching and learning the concept of multiplication, and even for practicing the multiplication facts up through nine. 
However, it is not the method we use for solving multiplication problems with one and two digit multipliers. I will introduce that in the next lesson. For teachers and parents who would like to follow along or even work ahead, I am using the counting method for the Cranmer Abacus. This book also covers developing prerequisite skills for the abacus, addition, subtraction, division, decimals, and fractions. Okay, who's ready to get started? I am. <laughs>